Hey, Pep, this is Coach Bell. Glad you're here. Hey, today we are into the seventh functional skill, and that is the skill of pitch timing. And pitch timing is the actual marriage of your swing or your body timing and the actual pitch itself. Now, if we recall, that body timing was created of several other functional skills. They would be uh, creating leverage, pulling out the slack, absorption, forward momentum, sweet spot awareness, that would all combine to create that idea of body timing. And now we take that body timing and we put it into pitch timing. So if you haven't, please go back, check out those previous six functional skills, and there are several videos around them, okay? You don't see a lot of drill work here, only because the drills that I've shown, those are clay drills. And you can adapt those to any which way that is necessary for you as an individual. Okay, so those are clay drills. And we keep adding to and subtracting from progressing and regressing. And along the way, there are some videos that are drill oriented. But once again, I find it much easier to change uh, my swing plan, my game plan, than it is to uh, change my actual swing um, from pitch to pitch. And uh, so, however, that does not preclude the idea that I don't work on my swing because, yes, we will always work on that swing. So along the way, you've heard me speak of being 100-100. And that is the idea of being 100% efficient, 100% on time. So the best that I can operate those previous functional skills, that's going to put me closer to being my most efficient, okay, as Sir Isaac Newton would would say in the in the second law, right, in the corollary, uh, as long as I am working the direction of the action, I will be at my most efficient. And then there's that idea of how can I maximize energy at the ball. Okay, and then the other 100% is being 100% on time. Now, for the time being, I'm going to stop at being 100-100, but here in the very near future, we will discuss being 100-100-100. And obviously, uh, m much of this instruction quite heavily influenced by the work of Perry Husband, uh, also by our friends Joey Myers over at the Hitting Performance Lab, uh, and uh, Dr. Paul Nyman. So it's just some great people that have gone in uh, citing their work, using their work, and adapting to what we do and what I see. Okay, so what is pitch timing? Okay, so pitch timing, it's that idea that that often we'll hear hitters say, hey, I was sitting on uh, a particular speed. Well, that in and of itself is true, and it does have perfect sense to, to us. Okay. However, if I'm locked in at at a particular velocity, okay, so if I am a youth player, 13 years of age, and I'm locked in at 70 miles an hour, well, it's going to be pretty difficult for me to hit the 80 mile an hour pitch or the 60 mile an hour pitch. Okay. And that is the underlying principles about what we're doing, right? So we have to we have to understand that not only is hitting a physical activity, but is also a mental activity. And so we have to get the mind prepared to help us sync up our body to the actual pitch timing. Okay. And I think for the most part, I think that's what we do as hitters until as coaches and parents, we get too involved, right? If we let kids go off and be by themselves and they're doing home run derby or they're playing any number of games that they create on their own on a ball field or in a backyard that is defined by the neighbor's house being in left field, so we always have to hit the right field, right? So so all of that, uh, all of that exists. So if we just let let our players play, we'll start to see what their tendencies are, okay? So, um, again, we've talked about being 100-100, and now I'm saying, hey, you know what, as coaches, as instructors, we've 
taught our kids to start out at 85, 85, and we're going to get cheated down from there, uh, the whole way down the, the, the line. Okay. So, um, basically what, we are saying here is that there is a different way and there is that way of using um, a mnemonic that right now which we discussed at the end of um, the last episode and you know if you haven't please go back and take a look at the use of the right now and once we begin to understand that that is our cornerstone that is the foundation for us to build upon as we move forward okay and so what will happen here as as we're talking about this is as we are beginning to act on pitches rather than react to pitches you know by its very nature reacting can't be the most efficient way of of performing correct so what we're trying to do is to find ourselves we talked about it at leverage being able to get into position to be quick and quick not talking about a speed but in a recognition of a pitch okay and the secret here the secret here if i can uh, i'm going to come here and i'm just going to draw on the screen if i may right the secret here is this idea that if if that pitcher oops let me clear that out of there that was pretty heinous okay that's supposed to be a seven so uh if the pitcher was here and he was throwing 70 all right if the pitcher was throwing 70 and again excuse me for my finger drawings here if the pitcher was throwing 70 miles an hour um boy that is just not cool the pitcher's throwing 70 uh if that pitcher is throwing 70 then at the plate a hitter is aware of the fact that there's an inside area of the plate there's an outside area of the plate neither are the same that each pitch is different we've talked about that and maybe I'll go into a little further depth as to as to what this gap is but for most hitters there is a gap of about uh, oh I'd say about four five or six mile an hour in at the uh, high school age middle school to high school age and then for the uh, college kids it's probably closer to seven eight nine miles an hour meaning if that pitcher can throw a pitch seven eight nine mile an hour at college uh four five or six mile an hour in middle school and high school faster or slower than the previous pitch then we're going to have a little bit of a difficulty uh, we're going to have a little bit of a difficulty in being on time with that pitch okay so that is the secret when it comes to hitting that's why even when we know that the curveball is on the way and we struggle with it it's because we are not understanding the idea that that shape has a speed and it's not shapes that get us out it's speeds that get us out and that becomes so important to me and that's what what this whole idea of pitch timing is so you know as as we get on to this when we get into the testing aspects of this we're going to see these differences as as they uh, as they occur, okay? And you're going to be oh, right? Wow! So that is my intent here, is to introduce you to the idea of what is coming up uh, as such. And so for me, um, and just looking back on experiences, it explains quite a bit. And so for us, uh, hunting is becoming the only way. Okay, and so we are hunting particular pitches, and we talk about doing only one thing, okay, and understanding what that one thing is. And for me, that one thing is, is understanding shape, understanding location, and understanding the speed of that shape. Okay, so what we are doing again, we are going to take our body timing, and we are going to marry it to our pitch timing. And... Uh, what we're trying to do that's why those functional skills are important because what we are trying to do is impart maximum energy at the ball we're trying to hit the ball hard we're trying to hit the ball far okay so far so good that's where we're at and so 
the idea of swing school was to learn each of those functional skills. Now, we need to be able to do that. That is necessary. So what is coming up? Well, the next piece that comes up, right? We've taken all these episodes. We put them all together, okay? We want to get uh, to know each of these functional skills exceptionally well. So take the time to do those because once we begin hitting, we're not thinking about making swings, okay? Once we get into games, our swing is what our swing is and on that given day. We're not going to be able to affect it. So we want our swing to be our A-level swing, whatever that means, the best swing that I have on that particular day, okay? So we're not trying to be judgmental. I just want to bring out my best swing on that particular day so, uh, so that I can not have to worry about those items, all right? We have those functional skills. We know what they are, okay? So we want to make sure that we get to them. So first things first, then, uh, we will do a uh, little preview of what we are looking to do, okay? So uh, just summing up this piece, um, I want to make sure that I'm 100% on time at 100% efficiency, okay? 100% of my energy being applied to the ball. Am I going to do it every time? Absolutely not, okay? But what I'm looking to do is to incrementally be closer to the ball than without this knowledge, okay? So if I get closer to the ball, I'm still going to hit some balls pretty close to my my highest, my exit speed, okay? And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to become more consistent in that level, okay? So as we wrap up this area, first things first, okay? On the first day when you head out, you want to just test your power inconsistency. This is where we're just establishing where am I in space and time. This is my uh, compass point, right? This is my geographic pinpoint. This is my my Garmin, my map quest, my maps. Okay, where am I today? And you know, you want to be an honest, you want to be honest with yourself as to where you are. And you want the numbers to be accurate. So obviously we have to measure and we have to take notes with this. So make sure that you have a notebook. Okay. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more uh, as we go along and we will present this. But when you are beginning your training, day one, okay, this is what we get. We're going to go out and we're going to exit. Uh, we're going to measure, excuse me, we're going to measure our raw power. We're going to do this with a T exit speed and a uh, consistency test. All right. So if you look in the description, you can uh, link into a form that you can print off that will uh, be a, um, a form where you can take your notes down and measure the, your consistency as well. But on day one, you will do 10 swings at a target, okay? You want to be have a device that you can measure with. So you could have a stalker gun pretty expensive item, uh, a more expensive item, a uh, less expensive item, but a very good item. This, uh, we'll also use the Pocket Radar Smart Coach, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in the near future as well. If you need one of those, um, we have a, a discount that, that you can uh, tap into. Um, but there are other items as well that you can use, but those are the two that, that we use. But we want to have something that we can measure, okay? And so when we do our first 10 swings at a target off of a tee, we're going to start, our target's going to be about 25 feet away, okay? And then we're going to start working on that. What we're going to get is we're going to get a top exit speed, and we're going to get an average exit speed, and we're going to get a, a line drive consistency rating as well. All right. The second 10 swings are going to be at that same target. And you're going to use a basketball and your regular bat. And what you're going to get out of that is you're going to get 
again, a top speed with the basketball and an average speed with the basketball. Okay, I'm not worrying so much about the line drive here, but but as Perry would call it, this is a self-leveling test. As soon as you hit it, you're going to know exactly what that is. And basically, we're working on eliminating absorption to the best of our abilities. Okay, and then the final 10 swings on day one, this is going to be uh, a front throw. All right, all fastballs, all one speed, videotaped, okay, from the side at 90 degrees. And what we're going to get is a top live exit speed and an average live exit speed. Okay, so if we need to pull out dad or coach or a friend, we're just looking for 10 pitches that are relatively consistent. Okay, if it's not the pitch, you don't have to swing. We're just looking for those 10. Okay, all right, so that sets up our first day. So we have it. Uh, again, I'll link into here. Uh, a piece where you can just uh, look at it, uh, print it off, do whatever you, you need to do with it uh, re regarding what the, what the first day looks like. Okay, and make sure you look at the video on how to film, and there's also a video on how to do a video analysis. Okay, but the first day is about us getting a T exit velocity, an average T exit velocity, and a line drive consistency test. Okay, hope this helps. I'll be back. Okay, we'll get into this more and more now. The fun is just beginning, so we've got some work to do. This is day one. All right, we're going to go through this cycle uh, twice. All right, so it's going to take us two to three weeks to get through the cycle. I'll have it out for you. Okay, you'll be able to download that. It'll be in the description, but uh, want to make sure you're looking at it. And I try to do something different with the technology today. Uh, I'll get some reviews. Hey, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you think someone else could use it, please pass it along. Okay, and as always, please subscribe. It means the world to me, and I appreciate it, and I hope that the information you're finding useful as well. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks a lot. I'll see you here very shortly. All right, Pip, get at it.